PIP standards are internationally recognized standards. A lot of world renowned companies use these standards. So here's a simple understanding as to how these standards are named and what's the coding system behind it. So without further delay, uh, let's start with first the naming convention. So if you would notice, PIP standards have an interesting coding system as compared to its peers like API, ISO, ISA, ASME, etc. Uh, let's take an example now. Mm, let's take ISO for example. So the ISO standard for DP flow meters is ISO 5167. However, if you would notice the PIP standard, uh, let's take for example flow meter installation. It's named as PIP PCIFL100. Do you notice the difference? You after the name of the standard, it has some alphanumeric characters. Uh, let's try to dig more deep into it. PIP standards are divided into eight digits. So every instrumentation PIP standard would be divided into eight digits. And yes, I've seen that every single digit has an important role to play. And by the end of the session, I'm sure you would also have an idea as to what each and every digit stands for. So without further delay, let's try to understand this by an example. So for our understanding purpose, we'll take this example of PIP flow design criteria. So basically this standard is used to uh, understand various flow meter technologies and which technology might suit us. Example, you might have uh, magnetic flow meters, you have orifice flow meters. So which uh, flow meter technology is compatible with our needs? Okay, so if you see, it has eight digits and uh, starting from PCCFL001. Let's try to understand the digits in more depth. So the first two digits here, they stand for the engineering discipline that this standard will be catering to. Let's take a uh, PC for example. So now PC stands for process control that is instrumentation and control engineering. What if the first two digits had been PN then it would stand for piping engineering. What if it's EL it stands for electrical engineering. Similarly you would have for every single discipline for example project engineering process engineering you would have different digits that represent that particular discipline. So this is what the first two digits stand for. Okay, now let's look at the third digit. The third digit here stands for the type of document that this particular standard caters to. For example, the digit three classifies PIP standards as per their procurement cycle. Now let's take an example. I know it sounds confusing. Uh, see, the first stage of procurement cycle usually is trying to select the right technology. So the third digit should be E, which stands for engineering guide. So any PIP standard with the third digit as E means that it is an engineering guide. For example, see here PC EFL001 stands for flow meter engineering guide and thus the third digit is E. Okay, now getting to the other uh, cycle uh, or the other stages of procurement. The second stage of procurement cycle seems to be selecting the design or the specifications. So suppose you select is you seem that orifice flow meter would be your desired technology to use. Now you would want to understand is uh, what specification should you give in. For example, the type of tappings that need to be given in, where should the tappings be oriented, etc. So for this, the flow, the standard PIP standard is PCCFL001. So you see the third digit is C, which stands for design specification or what they refer to as criteria of design. 
now what about the rest of the procurement cycle you we know that after a particular instrument is specified then we need to know about its fabrication details so the third digit for such standards would be starting with f the third digit after that is installation details so it's a dp flow meter how do you install the transmitter above the tapping below the tapping as per service so you would get this in the installation details similarly the third digit t stands for inspection and testing requirements so do you see the standards have a link with the procurement cycle it's after you fabricate a thing then you need to know how to install it you need to know how to inspect and test it so this is how the third digit plays a role in identifying that this standard is applicable at which stage of the instrument's procurement cycle okay now let's try to get to the digits number 4 and 5 Digit number four and five are very simple. They stand for the type of technology that is used. So, if you see in our example, it was a flow meter technology that we were looking for. So that's why it had F L in the digit number four and five. Seems pretty simple. What could be the other uh, examples? If it's a level measurement technology, the fourth and dig fifth digits had to be L I. So. Okay, let's take an example now. So, if if you see here, P C I I stands for installation. Remember, we have already learned that P C stands for uh, department. So, process control means instrumentation. So, this is a standard which is uh, for instrumentation department. The I stands for it is an installation detail, and then the L I stands for that it's a level measurement technology that it is catering to. Hence, the fourth and fifth digit in the example are. Li. I hope you're able to relate between this Li here and the uh, connection with the type of technology. After this, we will try to you know have and see some more combinations of digit four and five. Let's see. For example, we take temperature measurement. So Te would be the fourth and fifth digit for. that standard to be identified as a temperature measurement standard similarly we've already learned that fl stands for flow meter technology okay so for pressure it would be pr and if it's a standard which caters towards control valves it'll be having the fourth and fifth digit as cv so on and so forth so for example you could have as a uh, some standards for electrical some standards which is for analyzers etc now we coming to the end of this coding system digits number 6 7 8 this seem to be a bit confusing uh, for a person who is trying to understand the standards at an initial level because they don't have a very specific reason mentioned in the website but what i have noticed is that uh, you know these act like sub document numbers for the main standard yeah let's take an example to understand this so you know uh, people get confused when i talk about sub document number saying that uh, what do you mean by sub document number a standard has number of pages so what what's what's sub document number as uh, what is it referring to so for that i would like to start with taking a particular example uh, so that you know we get a in depth idea as to what the sub document numbering means let's take for example pc fte 100 so up till now we have learned is pc the initial two digits stand for the type of uh, discipline so it's pc means process control which means instrumentation f means it's a fabrication detail drawing te means it's for temperature instruments or temperature technology and now the sub document number mentioned here is 100 okay uh, now we'll try to see that this particular standard how is it sub divided okay uh, if it's a thermowell fabrication standard so you know thermowells are a bit uh, divided as per their construction for example uh, this standard has been subdivided first into threaded tapered thermowell design you see here so here the you are having is this particular standard pcf 
TE100 is then first classified into tapered thermoval drawing. So this drawing will have this document number. Similarly, if I'm trying to look for what could be the other number, so it's, this was threaded, right? So you should have another one which is flanged. So you see here, there is a flanged thermoval which is coming. What if we have is a weld in tapered thermoval? So you would have another page which tries to cater to this particular requirement. And finally, if we, if we have a socket weld thermoval design, then it sh this would cater. Do you see there is one thing which keeps changing in the sub document numbering, the last digit. Do you notice that? It's one, two, three, four. So, so this particular document is subdivided into these four things. So these last three digits cater to such differentiation in between in within the standards this might not be applicable for every single standard so where it's not applicable pip has not mentioned sub document number for such cases okay let's try to summarize the entire understanding okay so if you see this picture the first two we said they stand for the type of engineering discipline the third digit stands for the criteria of design or the type of document that we need to use the fourth and the fifth digit they stand here for the type of technology that is used so flow meter technology or temperature technology or level measurement technology control valve etc and finally the last three digits they stand for the sub document number